Back to Jan Crawford. She's had an opportunity to read more of the opinion. And Jan, what do you see? Scott, we are processing what is in fact this complicated decision, but it appears the Chief Justice has joined with four of the court's liberals to uphold the mandate. Jan, thank you very much. Headline of the hour, this is the most important thing that has happened so far. The Supreme Court has upheld the individual mandate, essentially affirming that President Obama's health care law is indeed constitutional and the Congress did not exceed its authority when it essentially ordered every American to buy health insurance. Yes, that means making some adjustments to protect health care programs like Medicare so they're there for future generations. It also means reforming our tax code so that the wealthiest Americans and biggest corporations pay their fair share. And it means getting rid of taxpayer subsidies to oil and gas companies, and tax loopholes that help billionaires pay a lower tax rate than teachers and nurses. I've said it before, I will say it again, we can't balance the budget on the backs of the very people who have borne the biggest brunt of this recession. Everyone's going to have to chip in. That's only fair. That's the principle I'll be fighting for during the next phase of this process. And in the coming months, I'll continue also to fight for what the American people care most about. New jobs, higher wages, and faster economic growth. Pope Benedict XVI and his security detail will reportedly begin using RFID technology to begin tracking priests and employees at the Vatican. The move to use the tracking technology comes after the Pope's butler stole sensitive documents from his apartment last year and gave them to the news media. Meanwhile, the Vatican will begin tracking its employees next month. This is the microchip that could one day be implanted under the skin of every single American. I'm just going to test this. Living the dream because that's where I get a lot of my little toys. Yeah. Program. Okay. So it's it's live. So let me get that ready. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stick the band aid on here. Thanks for letting us watch. Okay. So that was pretty exciting. A little bit of blood in there. So go ahead and just keep pressure there. All right. Se supone que ya aquí secuestraron a esta persona. Él presionó su botón. Avenida Zaragoza, 
Tengo una, una persona de una persona en 198 está teniendo una emergencia. And just around the next high-tech corner, an electronic chip like this that can be implanted under your kid's skin. And that he accompanied his wife Mary as she got the imp City Watcher employee Chuck Gordon was so stuck on the idea so doctors can pull up a record of her allergies in an emergency. You're going to feel like a little stick and then a bee sting, okay? And that's going to numb the skin up for us, okay? At this point, if you're squeamish about needles, it's best to turn away for a second. No. Getting an implant is not a pretty sight. A tiny little incision here. Put the needle in. We pull the needle out. And we put a Band-Aid on her and she's chipped. The doctor will send the unique 16-digit number on Mary's chip to the chip maker for safekeeping. But critics question the security of the system. The microchip has to be surgically inserted under the skin which means you'll have to have it cut out if you want it removed. Verichip, subsidiary of publicly traded Applied Digital, has added Tommy Thompson to its board of directors, a company hoping the former Health and Human Services Secretary can help accelerate the use of RFID for health care and security applications. Joining us to discuss the future of RFID and his plans for Verichip, Tommy Thompson, former Health and Human Services Secretary, and Scott Silverman, Chairman and CEO, of Applied Digital. D gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Well, thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be on your program. Ms. Thompson, I'll start with you. Um, uh, we're, we're doing a poll today. Would you have one of these things implanted in your arm or, I don't know, under your scalp or wherever you put it? <laughs> you put it in your right arm, and it's very small, and it doesn't uh, bother you at all, but it certainly is going to allow you to identify uh, the, who you are, uh, protect your child. If uh, you have a new child that's born in, the, in a nursery, you can protect that child from having somebody walk off of it. You can also protect your loved ones in a nursing home so that uh, you can put a bracelet on and identify that individual and be able to find that individual if that person wanders away. But I certainly would, and I think it's the coming thing. And the problem is, is that medical technology is so far behind that RFIDs are going to really be the impetus in order for us to get new technology in the medical field that's going to help people uh, improve their quality of care. And that's what it's all about. And I'm sorry, sir, did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely, without a doubt. Okay. That's it. No concerns? No, no. concerns at all? Because I, I have to admit, I, it makes me a little queer. In medical news tonight, a chip the size of a grain of rice could save your life. Mm -hmm. So let's now call with Dr. Jay Adlersberg. Jay? Shade, Diana, what happens if you're in a bad accident and can't communicate with emergency workers and doctors? New microchip technology now makes it possible for the emergency room staff to find out about your medical history at the touch of a computer key. In an emergency room, a split-second decision can mean the difference between life and death. So many emergency physicians have to operate blind. We have to make medical decisions not knowing what medicines you take or what allergies you have. Hi, Dr. Hamaka. We're going to uh, check your scan today, okay? Harvard doctor John Halomka says this radio frequency identification chip may solve that problem. He had it implanted in his right upper arm. A scanner reads an identification number. Those 16 digits are then entered into a secure website where his medical history is stored. EMT worker Brian Orsati says the chip could help emergency workers. Yeah, obviously, Secretary Thompson, it's an honor to have him on our board of directors. And as he stated all along, when the infrastructure is in place, he will get a chip. That could be 2050. Now, let, let me finish. Let me finish. We now have over 60 hospitals that have agreed to implement the system. So that time is nearing to now. And I spoke with Secretary Thompson yesterday, and we believe it's in the very near future that he will get a chip and then appear on your show. Today. You have a chip implanted is under, underneath your right it's arm? It's in the right arm. You power up a scanner, and you simply scan the arm. And once you scan the arm, you'll see that the identification okay, and, information... And on, our, on the laptop here you have it hooked up to. It's about Scott Silverman. It'll have my driver's license information. It'll have medical information. It'll have financial information. And it'll have security information for ingress and egress. In